allow people to really help to put this together Friday night, Saturday, and things like that. So uh, we're going to ask later on at the end of service all those able bodies, all these able bodies, help us put the chairs back and, uh, and also put the camera work that goes back to back so the school can use it. So that will be a one, and, and those that are not as able, you can just kind of go to the back and say, Welcome to our service. This is, um, I haven't done this for a while, so it's just really great to be here. It's a little different, but we still need to really have the right to as we come on the worship channel. So right now, uh, on with the announcement. The first thing is that we're having our top eight kids program from preschool to fifth grade and the uh, school side, and just with all children are welcome. They start at 10 a.m. and it ends to 4.30 or when we finish. Next. Uh, we also have our youth Sunday school down in the Romans camp at 10. I think they had a very adventurous time with in the dark, creating in the dark. Yeah, so. And, and it's kind of one of these things you know, you appreciate when you, when you don't have the, when you don't have some necessity in life, right? Electricity. Right? We're all very so comfortable, so convenient. When we don't have it, it's a little bit hard, but we move every two weeks away, so glad that if you had the Sunday school down on camp. Uh, we also had the college and young the, the adult class. They were upstairs. They were still, they also in the dark, but uh, they were still able to study the Word of God. So it's just uh, really great to see that it, it doesn't matter what option comes away, we should and can still continue studying and learning the Word of God. And the next one, we got uh, there's a uh, a seminar hosted by Phil on Tuesday night on Zoom from 7 to 9. It's called Agamaris. It started already. It'll go all the way to November 12th. So it's every Tuesday night for you to just zoom in and, and hear, you know, uh, from a video about the Agamaris. Next. We're going to have our fall January and this coming Saturday, actually. And so if you know of any preschoolers all the way to fifth grade, you can sign up, please. We just need to know kind of how many to expect. Uh, a lot, all the youth and you know, and then all the college and adults is kind of helping out that day. It's actually from 12 to 4, 3, 4, yes, 4, yes. So uh, it's, it's just coming Saturday. It's, once again, we're going to change this category to the, uh, 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 we call it for January. It's kind of like a little carnival for the children and, and just for them to have a good time. They can't come in costume because it is kind of a Halloween weekend type. And it's just a, it will be a lot of fun and games and doing some food and prizes to share. So uh, please sign up if you want to come or your children, your children want to come. And there's two saving dates on uh, November 23rd, Saturday, it's our Thanksgiving luncheon. And also, uh, December 14, our Christmas festivities, they both also be in the California. Right now, we're going to take a time for us to prepare our hearts as we come to God to worship Him. So, we can have a meditation and confession, and it's been a great time for you to really speak to the Lord and open your hearts and now lead us on to the Lord's prayer.
And so I'll recite the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So we all stand to recite our Apostles' Creed. <coughs>
out to us, how we sit in stillness and meditate. Uh, the ushers will come forth to collect that. It's just uh, us giving back a portion of what God has blessed us with so that we can continue to love God and love others in the community. And the ushers will come forward as we sing this song.
which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. That by testing you may be served. What is the will of God? What is good and acceptable and perfect? For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone, among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with each sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. This is the word of the Lord. All right, let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for giving us this opportunity <coughs> to worship, to worship together. Uh, just thank you, Lord, for, for bringing uh, some of the guys over from 10 o'clock to be here with us. And, uh, I miss them a lot. And I pray, Lord, your blessings upon them. And I pray your blessings upon us. And I pray, Lord, that uh, you would be with us right now and open up our hearts to your word and what it is you have to say to us. Just thank you again for this time in Jesus' name. Right. Uh, I'm going to have to do a lot of turning around uh, to see what's on the slides. Uh, I, don't know what's on the, I don't have the slides in front of me, but it's going to be kind of interesting. Uh, this, is, this is really cool. It's like having a, a meeting, a PTA meeting or something. I motion we spend all our money on ribeye. Yeah! <laughs> uh, so, you know, this is kind of cool. It's kind of interesting in here. Uh, just thank you all for being patient and uh, working together to make this possible. Thanks for the people who set this up. I know there are a couple of people, and one of them's here. I know Nate, who else is there? Liz? Liz, yeah, Liz, two of them. Elvin. Elvin, Elvin, thanks, Elvin. All right. You guys did this, and we saw the tables, uh, set up all the chairs. Thank you. Uh, this is a lot of fun. I, 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 I propose we do this every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, uh, we're, we're in the book of Philippians today, and uh, we're going to look at this. In Philippians, and uh, Philippians is kind of cool. It, it's a, a, a church that Paul really liked. Uh, you know, he's not yelling at them or anything like that. Right? Not, not like, like, not like some of the uh, Pauline epistles there. So he's, he's he's spending time writing to them because uh, even though he really liked the church, he really liked the church, but they did they did they did good. They were helping each other out, and they were. Um, they helped Paul out in his ministry, but there was uh, uh, something that really caused a little bit of a stir, okay? And so we're in chapter 4 in Philippians, and you'll see this happening. Um, they, they don't really focus on what it is that's causing the problem, but there was a problem. So, so that's the interesting part. So that reminds me of work. I mean, some of you, some of you know that uh, I work in, in the police department. And uh, they brought in like, you know, 50 pounds of marijuana in the other day, right? And, uh, and so it's like, where do we put this? Where do we put this? And, you know, typically we put it in this, in this locked storage room in our office. It looks like a closet, you know, uh, a little bigger than a closet. It's big enough. We could, we could stack the boxes in there. And uh, it, it would have an electronic lock so we could close the door. And, uh, and, but it, we had like 10 boxes. So we said, let's put it in our other room, uh, sort of like a drying room. So, so think about the airport um, international terminal. And you guys all been here. Um, there's an A side and a G side. Uh, on the G side, I think. Yeah, G side, I think. No, no, A side. That's where you catch all the flights of Hawaii. And then on the A side. G side, sorry, I'm, I'm mixed up now. That's where you catch all your international flights and everything. And, uh, and so in the middle, in the back there, as you head towards the back, uh, you can catch these elevators upstairs to the fifth floor. So, so when, you're, when you're catching your flights, that's the third floor there. When you come in for departures, that's the third floor. And so if you catch the elevator up two more flights, right, that's where my office is, in this hallway, this long hallway. And uh, what, once you get to these glass doors, um, you, you, you can, um, there's a lock door you can go in, and there's these electronic doors all around the hall. So you can go in, and it's pretty secure. Right? No one knows the code. It's only the guys who work there can get in, and all this stuff. So imagine this long hallway, and in this 
hallway uh, in the middle of my office, and along these hallways, there's these rooms. And one of the rooms is a storage room where we would, um, say, draw, dry the evidence and stuff like that, right? And so that's where we stored the marijuana in the hallway. So obviously, everyone was complaining. Um, and it's, it's a locked door, it's locked. And, and as I said, this hallway is, is secure, it's locked. And this, this door to this closet, this room, this dryer room is locked. So we have the marijuana in there. And, uh, and it smells, and this whole floor smells like marijuana, creeping marijuana. And we're all giggling and laughing, right? <laughs> so we're having a good time. So it's been there all day, it's been there all weekend. It's gonna be there when I get there on Monday. Because we can't get rid of it yet. I can't, I can't drive it down to uh, San Mateo County uh, to drop it off yet. We have to, I guess, the, the cops have to do their investigation and all that, right? So there's uh, 50 pounds of that stuff sitting in there. I think the street value is anywhere from 30000 and if it's high quality stuff, it's hundred or thousand dollars worth of stuff, right? So it, 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 there's a lot of stuff. And, 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 and yeah, and you just see me walking through the hallways, I'm drinking my coffee, and I'm giggling. You know, this smells good. And, 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 and it's just uh, uh, giving me a headache, and everything. when I get home, I've got this big headache and stuff like that. And it can't, you know, because it's, even though it's in a cake pack, it, you know, a cake pack teeth seal, it's, it's still, it's just permeating all over the place. Even through this locked door and, and everything, lunchtime, it's like, you can't even taste your food, and it smells so badly. So there was this argument so I just, uh, I worked with four other people, three to four other people, and you know, half the group was like, well, we should put it in our closet, the one that's in our office, because that's like a locked room within a locked room within a locked area, <laughs> right? So this is here. And the other one, and the other two were like, no, 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 we don't want it here because it, it really smells really bad. It's in a secure room. And, and they're both right. But it caused this, it caused this problem. Right? They're, they're both right. There's no wrong here. It, and it's causing this problem. It's causing this, causing this division. And, it, 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 and, and people were, were not, not really arguing, but they're having a heated discussion. You know, the people who signed for it, uh, you know, and with this evidence, you have to have a chain of custody. Someone is responsible for it, right? So the guy who signed it says, well, it should be in our locked room. But then there's this uh, lady in the room like, I can't handle the smell. It's just making me sick and I want to throw up and everything. Right? So it's like, you know, it just goes back and forth and, and, uh, uh, and I will tell you what the outcome was. It doesn't matter. The point is that there was a division in, in the office. And, and that's exactly what was happening in the book of Philippians. Right? There was this division. No one cares what they were arguing about. They could have been arguing about anything. It, uh, uh, the city of Philippi was this uh, uh, founded by uh, Alexander the Great's dad, right? Uh, Philippi, right? King Philippi in Macedonia. And, and, and um, there was this uh, city, I think, by the river. And the church was by the river. That's where, where the church was set up. And uh, there was this disagreement among two people. Uh, two, uh, the Bible was set, mentions their name. Uh, Eodia and Syncope, right? Or Syncope, or whatever you want however you want to pronounce it. I heard you pronounce it both ways. But there, there was a disagreement. No one focuses on, the uh, on what the issue was. But the issue was enough that it divided the two. Right? So there was a disagreement among two people. And who knows? Maybe it was kind of festering and it was kind of uh, causing a, 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 a disagreement between the church. Right? All of a sudden they're arguing. They're arguing about uh, uh, the, maybe their worship style. Maybe, maybe, maybe the electric guitar was too loud. I don't know. Right? Maybe the drums were too loud. I have no idea. Or maybe the pianist was like, no, no, no. I, 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 want, I want more classical type music. I don't know. So there was this disagreement in the church and Paul addressed it. And, and, and we're going to focus in on this passage in chapter 4. And the passage in chapter 4 really kind of drills down on what it is we need to do to overcome this division, right? And this is, uh, I think, you know, when I was doing the homework on this passage, it's like, it really hit me really hard because I was just thinking about our church. 
and where we are today, and what we need to do in order to be an effective church, to be a church that reaches out to our Lord Jesus Christ. Does it honor, does our church honor Jesus Christ? Does our church honor God? Right? Does, does God, is God smiling on this church? And, and we've been through a lot through, through the whole pandemic, and even before that, our church has, has, has been around for 50 years. And, and uh, next year, we're going to celebrate this 50-year uh, thing, and I'm hoping to stay with lobster. No, just kidding. I'm okay if it's just spaghetti. Hot dogs. You know, I'm good. But we're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate where we've been and how we got here. But, but, the, but, but when you look at the Bible, it's really clear. Celebration comes if God is honored and if God is smiling down on the people, on the church. Right? Celebration can happen. But people got to come back to God first. Always. That's always, that's paramount. That's Christianity 101. That's church 101. That we can't do this unless we do this together. We can't do this unless we repent of our sins personally and corporately. Our church can celebrate, but God wants us to come back to Him first and foremost. That's, that's, Paramount is, I don't know what you want to call it. It's, it's important. Okay, I can't think of a word. But it's super important. Okay? So, let's see. Let, oh, okay. So, we're talking about celebrations and stuff, right? We've been talking about uh, J uh, Jewish holidays, right? Um, uh, we started off with Rosh Hashanah, Happy New Year, and all that good stuff, and uh, uh, Yom Kippur. Those were the first two, and uh, I, I believe those two are about. Highest, highest holy year, highest holiest days, right? Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. It's a day of atonement. We come back to God first before we do the, the Sukkot stuff, right? The Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of uh, uh, Booths, right? Next slide, right? Oh yeah, yeah. See, see, Nate, Nate had. Uh, I remember one year when he set up. So last year, he set it up down there by his house, and I'm like, what the heck is this? Right? It was this. Right, he was setting this this, uh, uh, this this little 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 booth up where they can sell it. You know, he, his kids are, are are half Jewish, so that he wants them to learn about their customs and, and their and their um, you know their culture. And so, and here, uh, he, what it is is uh, the Feast of Tabernacles is a time of celebration after everyone came back to God. Right? Yom Kippur is just a, a time where you make it atonement for your sins. Right? And they, they perform their sacrifices and all that good stuff. And then they come back and now they celebrate. Right? So it's a, is it a month long? Or is it a week? Three weeks? A week? A week? No, but all the, stuff, all the celebrations. There's like, you know, there's three pilgrimages, right? It's about a month long. Three pilgrimages. This is the first one. Where people come back into Jerusalem and they're having a really boring good time, right? They're not they're, they're drinking the corona and all that good stuff, Bud Light and all that good stuff. And, and, and no, no, they're, they're into good stuff. They're into like Tink Power and all that. And that's German beer, even though they made China. But you know, that, that's the good stuff. And, and they're, they're having a great time up there in, in Jerusalem. And they're celebrating, but not before they come back to God. Right? So there's this seriousness. To their festival. There's a seriousness to their celebration. We're going to have this serious celebration in 50 years. I hope it, it, it'll be, uh, we'll have a great time here, meeting in here and just, just celebrating where we've been and how we got here. 50 years. But before we do that, we need to all come back to God. It's biblical. You just see it throughout the Bible, time and time again. You see it in the Old Testament. We see it in the New Testament, in the Philippians, right? That Paul, that Jesus Christ, the apostles, all the prophets, they want to celebrate this stuff. We want to celebrate it. But before we do that, again, we need to make, it, make our, and ask for 
the bitterness of our sins. We need to come back to God. Right? And, and, and the only way to do that is to have a heart to heart with God. You guys have to get down on your knees. I have to get down on my knees. And I have to confess every sin to God. Right? I mean, oftentimes we pray that God forgive me of my sins. It's a blanket statement. But it's not good enough. God knows what it is we did. Right? When we commit our sins, I said this last week, we commit them one at a time. So when we confess our sins, do we confess them one at a time? Do we sit there and we name them? Oh, Lord, forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of like, me, me uh, breathing in all this marijuana all day, you know, and, and I'm acting all silly. No, or, 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 you know, seriously, you know, that I, I cut off this person and, 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 I, and I gave him the, the number one sign, hey, you're number one. <laughs> Do I confess that sin? Do I confess that sin? Oh, Lord, forgive me. You know, I turned on my computer and this pop-up came up and I watched porn all day. Do I ask for forgiveness of my sins? You know? And then we all need to confess our sins to God. Right? And, and, and we have to be serious about it. We just can't, we just can't do like uh, the Pharisees did and just kind of like, oh, if you go through the ritual, you'll be okay. Right? It's serious business here. God takes this very seriously. If you're one of my children, if you are one of mine, and I've marked you with the mark of Jesus Christ, the blood of Christ, you're marked, you're branded, you're a property, you belong to God. Take this seriously. You're one of mine. Right? That's what God is saying. Come back to me. Come back to me. Come back to me. And the only way to do it is on your knees, in humbleness. Makes sense, right? That we have to humble ourselves before God. He is our creator, and we're his creation. So we come back before God, and we seek for forgiveness of our sins. Right? And, that, and that's what people do before they celebrate. Philippians 4.4. 4. talks about rejoicing. Right? Paul's, Paul's telling uh, uh, Yodhia and, and, and Sintiki, hey, let's rejoice and rejoice always. And they're probably looking at each other like, huh? What's Paul talking about? Rejoice in what? We have a disagreement here, right? She's wearing blue and I'm wearing red. It don't make any sense. We should wear the same color. It should be yellow or something. But we have different colors on. So they're arguing. And Paul's saying, hey, stop it. Right? It's causing division. We can't have division in our church. We need to come together and be united. Right? That's what Paul's saying. So rejoice. Rejoice in what? Rejoice in the Lord. Always. Because God's unchanging. He's never changing. So we rejoice in God always. We, and we rejoice His way. Not our way. We, 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 we rejoice in a lot of things. Like I said... We could be giggling all day in our office because I'm just having a great time with this breathing in all this stuff. Right? Joy, joy, happy, happy. But that's not the kind of joy that God wants. He wants this joy that, how do we sing it? That's deep down in our hearts. Right? It comes from within, and it's, and, and it's God-given, and it's always, 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 God is consistent. What's the next? There? Jesus Christ is saying, yesterday, today, and forever, 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 right? It never changes. That's our, our joy. Our joy never changes, and it's from God, and it's of God. It's a, it's a, it's a God-type joy. And he wanted the two of them to have this joy. Always. Right? Stop fighting. Stop fighting whether we should have fried chicken or pizza for lunch. Right? We just need to come together and we can work it out. Let's have chow mein this time. Right? Forget pizza, forget fried chicken. Everybody been hungry yet? <laughs> Keep talking. Right? That, hey, it's important that we be united. And be united as a church. Cornerstone needs to be united. We need to come together. And differences 
You know, how do you worship? How do, how, how, how do you do fellowship? How do you do Sunday school? We need to throw all that out the door. We just need to do it together. Right? I don't care about your way. I don't care about my way. It should be our way. Our way of doing things, our way of doing things together. Right? So we have to figure that out. Right? It's, it's just like what we do every Saturday when we do the food pantry. You, know, you guys know me, me and my wife. We're not like, you know, we don't have rules. We, that's just not us. We're not going to sit there. You know, it's, not, it's not like it's a free-for-all. But everybody knows what they need to do, and everybody knows what they're supposed to do. And everybody chips in. And they come in week in, week out, and I thank everyone for coming out every week. I, I never say thank you enough for everyone who comes. I don't, I don't make them come out of some, there's no sign up. They just show up and they help. Right? And everybody has whatever their job, whatever it is they like to do, and they do it. Right? And, and sometimes there's differences. Differences of opinions. Right? Sometimes it gets a little legalistic, and, and people are like, oh, this guy shouldn't be in line. Right? He missed, his, he missed his chance. He has to get the end of the line. Right? And that's why I step in and I go, uh, do I follow the rules or do I bend the rules? Right? The point is that I'm trying to maintain peace. And one time, this guy was really angry. And the last thing I wanted him to do was start swinging at one of the one of the older women that's, that's controlling the line. I don't want him swinging at her. So I, my, my whole thing is like, let's safety first. So I'm bending the rules and say, okay, right? The rules be damned, right? I'm gonna take care of this guy and, and we're gonna maintain peace and no one gets hurt. Right, that's number one. That's, that, that, that's how we do things. It was the same thing with our church, right? We, we can have all these rules all we want, but these rules can really, really, uh, um, how do you say it, dictate how someone wants to live. Some people like to live by rules and rules alone, not by the spirit of law. They, they, they like the, they like the, the letter, letter of the law is more important to them. But the spirit of the law is what it's all about sometimes, how, how we make sure, maintain safety, and at the same time treat people with dignity and, and respect. So it, 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 it's just this, this, this balance we have to have. Well, it's the same thing in the church. We have to have this balance. I'm not saying we lower our standards. We still maintain our standards and we still obey God's word all the time. But we have to, we have to look at each case individually, one at a time. And it depends on the person. Right? We know. We know if we say something just the wrong way, just a little bit. That person is gone forever, not only from the church, but maybe in their relationship with Christ. Right? And it's just because of something we said. You know how, how we said it. We have, to, we have to be sensitive to that. And, and Jesus talks about it. And Paul talks about it. And God's talking about it. Next, next slide. Right? Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Let your reasonableness, if you, uh, what is it? I have, I have the word here. The Greek word is, where is it Epicase. Epicase? Epicase? Reasonableness? It's uh, translated in, in, in other Bible translations. Uh, gentleness? Is you, there's this root word in there. The root word is what I'm going to get at. The root word is selflessness. Right? Reasonableness, selflessness. This is what people are looking at when they come to our church. What do they see? Number one, do they see a church that's united or a church that's fractured? Alright? You all don't have to answer this question because it might be a great question. When they come to the cornerstone, what do they see? Is our church united or is our church fractured? That's number one. Number two, when they come in here, do they see selflessness? Do they see that? Right? Are we selfless? Do we think of others better than ourselves? That's the next slide. Next slide. <clears throat> 
Yeah, right? Do we think of others better than ourselves? Better than us? Hey, you're better than me. Let me cow I mean, I mean, seriously. I mean, that, that's hard to do. We don't do that here in this, in this society, in this culture. We just don't do that kind of stuff. Right? We're never, ever going to admit that someone is better than another. But what does the Bible teach? Right? The Bible is crazy like that, right? It teaches us that we need to treat other, others better than ourselves. And when we do the food pantry, and we're the ones handing off the food, guess what? The recipients of the food are better than us. I can't say that enough. Right? They're the ones, yes, they're the ones that, that uh, benefit from the food. And we're doing all the work. They sh they're, they're sitting there, they're thanking us. But we should be thanking them that they're taking the food. Does that, that kind of sound funny? Thank you for taking the food. But that's how we need to act as Christians. We need to treat others better than we treat ourselves. Wow, that's crazy. That's really crazy thinking. And that's what Paul's saying. Next slide. Right? And it talks about, and it talks about Jesus Christ and his selflessness. That he gave himself for us. That he, he treated us better than he treated himself. He let himself die on the cross. He let himself be spit on. He let himself be beat on. He let himself get his skin ripped open by these, by these nail on whips and stuff like that. That's how much he loved us. He treated us better than he treated himself. And that's how we need to act as Christians. Next slide. Right? And then Paul says, listen, be reasonable, uh, uh, rejoice all the time, be reasonable. Then what does he say? Right? If you're, not, if you're divided, if your church is divided, guess what's going to happen? Anxiety. If your church is divided, if you're not right with God, anxiety, right? It says right here, do not be anxious about anything, but everything in prayer and this big word supplication. Supplication. What does supplication mean? Right? We come to God in prayer and we pray. But how? With this attitude of supplication. Right? It's humbleness. Right? Just like I was saying, that before we celebrate, we need to humble ourselves before God and ask God for forgiveness. You can't do that with pride. Remember, remember the two people uh, that Jesus was pointing out. There were two people praying. One guy, the Pharisee, was praying and says, Thank God I'm not like those people. Right? That guy was doing it wrong. But the other guy, the tax collector, whom everyone hated, tax collectors took everything away from people. They, they worked for the government. They were their own people, their own community, from their own community. And yet, they were okay with the government stealing everything from the people in the community. So guess what? Who didn't like tax collector? That tax collector went up there and he prayed, God, forgive me of my sins. And Jesus asked, which one is forgiven? Right? The guy who, 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 who named his sins one by one in order that he committed them. Right? That's what God is so smiling down upon. That this person has come back to me smiling. Yes, he admits he did wrong. And he feels bad. I get it. But I am I'm so happy that he's coming back to me. This prodigal tax collector son is coming back to me. The Pharisee, not so much so. He has too much pride. That division is more important than unity. If that division, if he's hung up on that division, forget it. Why should I smile on this guy? Let me, let me smile on this guy instead, who's willing to compromise and to change and to say, hey, the church unity is more important it's more important than how I feel and what we want. 
Right? That's what God wants from us. Humble, humble prayer, supplication. Right? And what else does it say? Thanksgiving, gratitude. We have to be happy that we got hot dogs for our 50th anniversary. We have to be happy for that. Right? If you're Costco dogs, not so bad. <laughs> but we have to be happy with that. Gratitude, supplication, gratitude, thanksgiving. Right? We have joy. We rejoice God's way. And, 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 we, and we come back to God. Right? And we come back to God and we make sure that we're praying. We're praying in humbleness and we're praying and, uh, and, and we're praying with gratitude. And we thank God for what He's doing. Next slide. Right? We'll receive it if we trust God. Faith. We will receive God's answer in prayer. If we trust God. Right? Faith is trusting God when we don't understand. I don't understand why there's these differences in this church, Lord, but I trust you that you're taking our church in the right direction, and we're having faith in God. It says, God, if you want us to meet in a cafetorium all the time, we'll do it. And it sounds like a PTA meeting, we'll do it. <laughs> right? If this is what you want, we'll do it. We'll trust God, even though we don't understand. Next slide. And then we'll get this peace. This peace, this God divine given peace from God. What does it say? The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Right? We don't understand. That's faith. Will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. That's what Pam read in, in uh, Romans uh, chapter 12 today. Right? She read that we need to change, change, help the sign. Change our hearts, change our minds. Right? Change. That's what God wants from us, to change. Right? Are we submitting to God? Are we rejoicing always? Are we giving thanks for hot dogs? Are we changing for God? Are we becoming one as a church, as opposed to being a fractured place? Are we coming back to God and asking God to bless us? And we don't understand why our church is the way it is. But Lord, we will trust you and we will follow you no matter what. And we will give you our hearts in this place no matter what. Right? And that's what Paul's telling the two ladies at the river, the church at the river. Are you guys doing this for God or are you doing it for yourself? What's the next slide say? That the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's from Romans. Next slide. Keep your heart with all vigilance, and from it flow the springs of life. Proverbs is talking about our hearts and changing it for God. Next slide. But I discipline my body, and I keep it under control lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. Remember that verse we, we memorized it a million times too? That my feet, my body, make it my slaves, so when I preach to others, I myself will not be disqualified. What's Jesus saying here? What's God telling us that we need to change and change for Him? And we need to discipline ourselves. If you read Philippians 4, the next couple of verses, we're not going to go into it today. It talks about the disciplines we need to do in us in order for us as a church to be united. What are these characteristics that it lists in Philippians chapter 4? These, these characteristics that are, hey, guess what? They're the same characteristics of our God. God has these characteristics. God wants us to, as his children, he wants us to have the same DNA that he has. So if his DNA says, hey, I want you to be holy, guess what we're supposed to be? How are we going to get there? How are we supposed to be holy? Well, we do the things that Paul's writing down. And he's telling the two ladies in, 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 in the New Testament. Right? you got to pray. But you got to pray with humility. you got to have joy in your hearts all the time. And you got to do it with gratitude. And then this peace, you'll get this peace. 
the peace that God promised us in Haggai chapter 2, that we would have this peace in this place. We will not have this peace in this place if we're fractured, if we're divided, like the two ladies were in the Philippians. Right? Those are the things to keep in mind. What's the next slide? Practice these things, immerse yourself in them, so that they may see your progress. First Timothy. Timothy. Is that the last slide? Is there another one? I think Romans, Roman, there it is. Right? By, by, by the mercy of God, to present yourselves as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, which is your spiritual act of worship. Right? We need to give God our hearts. We need to give God our minds. And we can say, hey God, Shape it the way you want. Right? Shape it the way you want. If you want me to think hot dogs instead of ribeye, I will. For your glory, whatever it is you want, God, not what I want. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for giving us this opportunity to uh, look into your, your word, to look into your commands, look into your truth, look into what it is you wanted the church to in, in, in Philippi do, and what it is you want Cornerstone to do. To come back to you in humbleness and to unite ourselves in your glory so that people may see and people will want to be here. And we will want to invite people because of our love for you. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Pastor Hank. It's just a great reminder. Uh, that as a church, if we humble ourselves, God will fulfill His promise to us, uh, which is to bring peace and to bring all nations in here. Uh, so as we respond, let us uh, once again come together as one body and one voice sing praise to God so we can all rise.